Welcome back to another episode of Puff Drink Talk. I am your co-host Dylan Wilson. Help and kill. And today we will be talking a little bit about South by Southwest. As you can see, our beloved friends and co-hosts are not here with us today. Conrad is uh, in California, I believe, at Universal Studios with the fam. Yeah, and on vacation. George is doing South by Southwest stuff. I think he's hosting some friends from out of town. So we miss you guys. And uh, it's going to be tough doing it without you this week. But I think we'll manage. Yeah. Cheers. So, South by Southwest. Is it that type of event that um, I've been here for so long now? Mm Mm-hmm. And I never went to see it. You never gone? No. Um, there are a lot of things that are free. If you go downtown, you can stumble upon some free stuff. But um, you can also buy passes for certain weekends for concerts. Uh, it depends on what tickles you. Um, it's music and film. Um, like Jordan with Tim Filler Productions, I believe, are doing some sort of filming for South By and stuff going mm-hmm. on. Um, so there's all sorts of things to do. But... Um, the worst part is just the traffic. It gets crazy, but it is kind of coincided with spring break. So I've noticed all the kiddos being at home. There's not as much traffic in the mornings coming to work. And going back, there's pretty significant traffic, but something to be used to, I guess, in Austin. Just congestion on the road. Traffic. Yeah. yeah, and um, I've really never been to. Um, and it's funny because, uh, well, we had, um, of course, you know, two little girls, and it's hard for me and Alice. Oh, Alice, Alice is one of my daughters. <laughs> it's hard for me and Chris go and leave Alice and Lily home because they don't have the age to stay home. Right, uh, and uh, and also, uh, if we get, I mean, my wife doesn't really like getting somebody to watch over them. Yeah. You know, until they're a certain age. So, like, for example, Alice would be kind of okay right now, but Lily is still a little young. A little young for, you know, for Chris to be comfortable with, you know, letting someone stay someone there and, watch stay and watching. Yeah. So, and then, you know, we don't really go out to these places to see because, you know, we are in traditional married life. Well, uh, um, if y'all, I mean, y'all always have stuff going on the weekend birthday parties and things like that but there are probably some kid friendly things you could walk around and go do um let's see what the schedule is for it um i think there's also like a live south by is that legal putting in a, a picture of somebody smoking yeah it could be a cigarette maybe smoking a fag i don't know um let's see conference sessions filming tv screenings the black keys i believe is Today? No, tomorrow. Um, it's a band. Uh, they also release movies, typically. So it's the whole day thing, then? Um, it starts all, at 10 a.m.? Yes, it'll be a whole day thing, and it's all, every day they have different things. Um, so, let's see, today... And all these people, a lot of it is um, kind of shines light on some smaller artists too that you might not know the names of. Um, so it always just ends up being mm-hmm. something random. And then there's bigger names too. So tomorrow, 1 p.m., keynote the Black Keys, um, AI and the Independent Artist. Interesting. Friday. There's just all sorts of different things that go on. They'll do movie releases sometimes, too. Um, I believe there's a movie coming out, or maybe they already released it. It's um, the new Roadhouse movie with Jake Gyllenhaal. Mm -hmm. They're releasing at South By. I've been uh, many times, but as I've been a little older, I haven't really made much of an effort to go anymore. Um, It was a big thing in high school. Everybody wanted to go, but... I'm not, I mean, I don't follow it closely enough, but uh, that's the biggest thing going on. That's interesting. Well, I think um, Austin is is full of um, events, you know, throughout the year. 
Mm -hmm. um, sometimes uh, people think like California has lots of events, and yes, it yeah, it does. But it feels like for some reason Austin is huge on movie industries and yeah, I believe sports. We're the um, nation's capital for live music as well. So, I mean, there's just always live music going on, but the big festivals happen here. So, I think the other big one um, is in October, Austin City Limits, ACL is the other one that's real big. But uh, South By is, it's kind of like a global thing. Like, people come here from other countries for this. So, it's huge. Yeah, George was saying that he has at least three friends coming uh, to participate and like spending a lot of money just to come and and sit out and maybe talk to some people it all depends I mean he knows you know a lot of influential people um, you know, you know the, the line of work that he does right and he works with athletes and, and like help them you know establish um, in the country so coming over here for school and yeah stuff. It's, it's pretty nice what he does so and I think it's, it's um, you know, it's interesting. This is, a, I think, Giovanni and the Hired Guns um, might be like a Mexican country singer. I'll have to look that up separately. I think I know who that is. Yeah, he makes good music. I'm, I'm familiar with him. Um, back to this stuff. This is all the stuff. I guess the biggest names that are gonna be here. Stockholm based, Water Baby, Venezuela's Rawayana, probably butchering that, uh, Portland, Indie Rocker. Um, hey, what's, what's going on? What the hell? What, what, what's happening? What's going on? What's happening? I don't know. Man, this is crazy. Is the power going out? Well, I don't know. I mean, computer is on. No, this lights up. The lights are off. Um, what the fuck? Do have to reset the computer? Doesn't seem like it. What the fuck? It's working, right? What the fuck is in my head? How'd this get here? <laughs> Gee. Look. The lights kind of... I uh, have this one light. Oh, the computer is on. And all of a sudden we got hats. And it was dark for a moment. Like everything went down. And then only a few things came back up. Yeah, it's kind of creepy. My cigar is still here. So. It's working fine. Well... You know what that reminds me of, right? You know what today is? No, what's, what, what is today? Uh, today is March 13th. So, um, very historical day for the Goss Opera House ghost mystery. You know, it's a worldwide phenomenon. Everybody you knows gotta that. have to pull that one out. Pull it up for I, you. I have no you're, idea. You're not familiar with it? I have no idea what's going on. It's happening again! It's happening again! Oh shit. Is it back? Oh, I got, I got, another, back. You got, I got a different <laughs> thing on my head! <laughs> is Robin that a freaking ghost going on? I think there is. Let me see if the this will work. Working. So if I put it... So oh. it, Murder at the Goss. Woman burned to death in 19... 36. Was it on the March the 13th? <laughs> March 13th, 1936. Uh, to the day. It's the 88th year anniversary. 88th year anniversary of, of these. Of this woman burning of, to death. Of these... And then she just caught fire, apparently. Well, the story goes... How do you know about it? Well, um, everybody knows about it. It's it's huge. It's, it's the 88th year that since it's happening, so... 
it's a really big anniversary date. You know, everybody celebrates their 88th birthday, you know? Yeah, yeah, and a lot of people don't really get to that age, so a story getting to that age is kind of impressive. It's impressive, right? Um, it's actually not the only thing, I believe, that happens on March 13th, but while we're on the topic of it, yeah, I think it was a woman who um, was screaming, her neighbors heard her, she was burning, she runs out of the hall of her apartment, she's burning to death, she got on fire and she dies. And it turned out that it was her son, who was a drunkard, who was really pissed off because she wouldn't go buy him more alcohol and she fell asleep on the couch and he doused her with um, medicinal alcohol or something and set her ablaze. And, and that's what the investigation... That's what they ended up discovering. But to this day, they still hear screams and piano playing and all kinds of weird ghost stuff. And in her exact apartment, the entire building was renovated, but they didn't touch her door or anything in her apartment. They left it all the same. Because there's all this crazy ghost stuff that goes on. So they wouldn't get in. Yep, you can't get in. Can we, can we see more? Can we scroll it down? And, is there a photo of it or something? There's a lot of coffee stuff in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the corridor. The corridor. This might be the end of it. I, maybe I can find another uh, a page. That, there is a picture. I've seen the picture. Man, that's... You see, this light is on. The computer back there is on. But the other lights just... Mm. Yeah, here's inside the room after oh, it caught fire. Man. And the screams come comes from there. Yep, the screams come from the room. Uh, it would have looked something like this, circa, you know, 1900 era. They renovated the whole place now it looks like this oh that looks nice but her room still looks like this you didn't touch it. didn't touch it so that's that's uh, today's photo then yes uh from 2019 actually but oh, if they didn't touch it they oh they it. renovated it back then then they renovated it in 2019 yeah, so they 2019. took these pictures um and that's what it looked like before and, and after it looks a lot nicer after i'll give them credit on that there's a commercial building yeah, they do. Uh, it's an opera house, so they do theater shows and stuff in there, too. It's very popular. 88th anniversary. It's not something that you, you know, you know, it's like 50th anniversary, 100th anniversary. 88. Yeah. 88. Even more special, if you ask me. If you try to find a uh, reference for... You know, see, Google it on the internet to see if there is any importance on the 88 number, you know, what the 88 number means. Because that could be interesting, because, you know, for all this shit going on, you know. It heard you. The aluminum. Look at the first. Yeah, you heard what me. The hell? <laughs> it's, it's happening. The ghost is here. What is so the, the suggestion? What? What does the 88 mean? How, <laughs> uh, how the heck, man? Symbolizes fortune and good luck in Chinese culture, since the word eight sounds similar to the word eight, which implies food <laughs> or wealth in Mandarin or Cantonese. So maybe this is the year that uh, the ghost is going to go away. Or the ghost brings good luck. So they shouldn't be scared about it then. Yeah, we have a ghost in here, it seems. Apparently. Maybe it's bringing us good luck. It's not smoking my cigar. My cigar is fine. Well, Yours since we're off. here, we mm. have these hats. I'm going to jump into a little conspiracy talk. Could it be alien then? Instead of a ghost? It didn't even go out. I thought it did. Aliens. Another significant 27 years ago to the date, March 13th. So now I want to know what 27 means. <laughs> the 27th anniversary? It's the 27th anniversary of the Phoenix Lights. Okay. Phenomenon out of Phoenix, Arizona, where people saw strange triangular 
set of lights flying through the sky. And it was seen, witnessed, and reported by many people. Mm -hmm. um, and it's still to this day considered one of the, the biggest events of UFO spottings. There have been some people debunking it and trying to say it has something to do with the Air Force and whatnot. I don't know. I don't know. I believe in aliens. I think maybe it could have been UFO. Um, well, that looks like a alien spaceship. This one does. It looks more like this. I don't know if it'll get any bigger than that. I love when you click enlarge and it is the same size. That'd be great. It's more like doo -doo -doo. That's the March the 13th. People saw something like a V-shaped object flying over Arizona. For almost two hours. It was 106 minutes. Unbelievable. So, um, it has been since debunked, claiming that uh, there was some Air Force stuff going on in that area. They were testing out, I believe. Um, well, let's read it. It'll say... Like Warthog A-10s or something. Explanations. According to the shape of what became known as the Phoenix Light Incident of 1997 consisted of two unrelated incidents, although both were results of activities of the same organization. Operation Snowbird, a pilot-trained program operated in the winter by the Air National Guard out of davis Mountain Air Force Base in Tucson, Arizona. Hmm. So they were flying A-10 Thunderbolts in a formation at high altitude, and that's what they say was what was being spotted. I don't know. I think they would say that. That's not, that's too easy, right? Well, the flying formation, it has a V-shape, like the birds when the birds are flying, right? It's awfully convenient. I but know. I agree with you. They do. They do fly. I'm a little skeptical. Although all this this thing you know shows up in my head, I have no idea. <laughs> Gee, man. Uh, so and how how long ago was that? Thirty? Twenty-seven? Twenty-seven. Well, what does that mean then? Twenty-seven years anniversary or something? Now I'm gonna open a new tab, and then let's see. Let's go to Google first, just to see if Google is really listening to us. Still stuck on 88. 88, I think it's more important, the 88 number. It suggests that you are on a path of self-discovery. And spiritual, spiritual growth. Maybe urging you to trust your intuition. So... And follow your inner guidance, which I think is pretty fitting. I think this is more important than the ghost story. I think so. I think we should... Listen to ourselves on this one. What do you think? You think aliens are real? We are too perfect to at, for certain people <laughs> 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 to discard the idea of aliens not being like we not we not being aliens because. That's pretty much, I think, what we are. We are, you know. Alien ourselves? Yeah. Okay. What about lizard people? I do know people that believe that there are walking beings among us that are like lizard species. Um, like Vladimir Putin was, was accused of that, being a lizard. Have you ever heard of this? The lizard people? No. Lizard. I'm just saying, man. It's a reptilian conspiracy theory. Boom. It's in Wikipedia, so it's real. It has to be. Do we really need another reptilian shapeshifter as president? A protest sign referring to reptilian politicians. Ooh. And who's that? I don't know when they were protesting in this.
They're saying that Trump is that? They're wow. saying no Trump, pro reach. People's Power Assembly in Baltimore fits anti Trump counter demonstration during National Guard Association of the United States Conference and exhibition at the Baltimore Convention Center. It's a fucking mouthful. I I had a customer the other day saying that Biden is a reptician. Oh, that's I think you just coined something. Reptilian politician or repetition. That's good. <laughs> that is good, my friend. A repetition. <laughs> oh my God, Biden. It's a repetition. This is interesting, though. On March 4th, 2013, another March story, a video depicting a security agent with unusual features guarding a speech by U.S. President Barack Obama was spotlighted in a Wired report about shape-shifting reptilian humanoids. I want to see that video. What the fuck is that? (laughs) What's going on, then, today? Obama security reptilian <laughs> humanoid. <laughs> so if every president is a reptilian, that is a repetition, right? A repetition so of repetition. They're just the same person transfigurating into. Uh, it could be. YouTube took it down. Uh, YouTube took it down. I mean, something that cannot prove, then, okay, yeah, I agree with that. Whoa. Oh, I see. It's kind of blurry, though. Mm. I don't like when it's blurry, because it could be, you know, being messed up with. The conspiracy theorist in you has to, has to believe it. Let's see, here's a recent picture of Barack Obama. That's fucked up. I don't believe that at all. Transformation of ego. Interesting. I don't know. Are there really a group of people out there that believe that there's like reptilian humanoids? Well, apparently. I had a cousin that said so. I know, but. I thought that just might have to do with, like, drugs or something. Do you think so? (laughs) I won't name drop her. I remember her name. (laughs) That's crazy, man. It is crazy. Um, Well, to be honest with you, it's a little bit crazy today what's going on. Like, two of our... Our light sources went out and our members aren't here. Two of our members not being here and then all of these things happening. Hmm. I don't know. What's another conspiracy that we could look into? Oh, this is on kind of recent. Have you heard of like the laser weapon system that everyone's saying is responsible for all these fires, like in Hawaii, uh, Maui, and um, I guess other places where it's happening? I don't know if it happened in California, somewhere in Texas. Probably they tested that uh, a few years ago when uh, Bolsonaro was a president in Brazil. Because there was a lot of wildfire in uh, in the Amazon forest. There's a... Um, this is from AP News. Is AP a good source? I think it's Associated Press. I don't know if it's a good source or not. I'm not... I'm just quick scrolling to see if there's like a video. Candidly, I'm not super into watching the news and keeping up with it. I'm just not a fan of uh, all the negativity all the time, you know? Mm -hmm. But when stuff like this comes out, it is interesting. It happened again. What's going on? Isn't it crazy? I don't know what's going on. Well, we're back. Well, we got live back on, so... And our hearts are gone. <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> no. 
This is so weird, man. It's one of the weirdest things that ever ever happened. That's the happened craziest to me. episode we've ever had. That, did you see any like like a, a sh shadow or something walking by or something? I don't know. I thought I saw like one of our ceiling tiles move a little bit. But There's a gap over there. Oh, there, there is a gap over in there. Huh. I don't know if I like that. Man, it's so I know we're not funny. supposed to be scared, but that's kind of unsettling. Well, South by Southwest. <laughs> Are you familiar with the Black Keys? Well, I prefer that subject. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, man. <clears throat> wow. Is it on the wine? I don't know. I haven't been to South by Southwest in like a couple years, but last time, oh, actually, it's more than a couple years. I saw Blue October there like a long time ago. And then a couple years ago, Sam and I were just downtown and we went to um, the Garden Shores, whatever it's called. We're just wandering around. There's so much free stuff that it's like, unless there's really something you're into to pay for, you just end up seeing cool things, little pop-up stuff. I saw on the news once that um, the DeLorean, I think it was the anniversary of That's cool. well, the, the, of the year that they they got back from the future or something like that. Oh, like in the movie? Like what yeah. year it would have been? Yeah, and then, you know, he parked the DeLorean and then came out of it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, I think it was a few years ago. I don't I don't recall what year that was in the, in in the, the movie. movie. Yeah. Let's see. That's just saying the year it was filmed, right? Well, uh, is that uh, no, 2015? 2015. Yeah, is it 2015? That, uh, that's October. It's the present time, destination time. You went back to 85. And to be honest, I've never seen Back to the Future. Oh. I've never seen any of them. You got it. Well, it might have been, I haven't seen recently, so it, it could be a little bit dated now, but um, I just if you have time, you know. I'm smoking a cigar indoors. I have the time. <laughs> have time one day. <laughs> According to Eddie Sahaki and Kirby Hours, I have the time. I can download it. Or I wonder where it's streaming at. No, I just, I don't know why I never saw it. I just never saw it. It might be somewhere that you can just um, watch. I'm sure of it. It's, it. it's a good movie. Have you seen all of them? Yeah. But you've got to watch with the mentality that... You know, at that time, you didn't have a lot of technology. The technology was like being discovered by the mainstream. You know? There was technology in the uh, government and some universities, but there wasn't a lot of technology still in the hands of the public. You know, we could watch TV, we could, you know, talk on telephones, we could have some internet access, not 85, not a lot. It wasn't like the World Wide Web of no, just no, information. No, it, it was... No, it was not yet. I mean, there was something called, that I forgot now, um, something net, of course, was this network. Uh, but, so you gotta understand that, like, you know, what they were, like, envisioning from you know, for the future with the mentality that uh, you didn't really see, you know, cell phones. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. You didn't really see, there were satellite phones at the time. Well, that'd be interesting. So they made it all the way to 2015? Well, it, it just jumps to 2015 and then it shows how, you know. What they think it, what would, they be think like. it would be. Yeah. That's interesting. Were they pretty far off? I think so. 
probably. Well, there was there was a lot of but riots like, as well. I mean, it all depends. You know, they, they they go back and forth, and then you know they change something in the past, and then that thing changes in the future. The butterfly effect. Yeah. So. Yeah, you gotta when when you have the time, just watch it. I'm gonna do that as well because um, uh, it's actually an interesting film to watch because you know there's a lot of different concepts. It's like, oh, what if we really have developed into that? It's like flying skateboards. Uh, they, okay. Yeah, they skateboard. Yeah, they skateboards didn't have any wheels on it. Just hovering. Yeah, and we're just like kind of hovering on on at a certain distance of the ground. How do you do tricks then? You still can do the tricks. You gotta watch to see the tricks because, of course, they're using wheels. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then taking, taking it, out. it out in the, in the edition of the. But yeah, it's. Uh, I read something that uh, I guess President Trump thinks that we're gonna have like flying cars at some point. He wants to like invest in it or something. Well, I still don't know if that's gonna be the case either. But you're, it would have to do with like the structure. The infrastructure for being able to do something like that. You would have to have some sort of track that, you know, people follow. Because you couldn't go, you know, all the way. I mean, it's, it's like the, you know, an airplane, right? Is so regulations? Yeah, there's the regulations and then the, 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 the pilots, or they will they will use, like, you know, tracks so that they don't crash or something like that. Okay. But imagine if you have just, you know, anybody can just buy a car and go. The amount of cars that we see, you know, today right. on, on the streets. If you have that same number flying all over the place, you'd have to look front, back, and side to side, up and down. So you add a third kind of dimension right. to your perceptive. Instead of, like, just looking around, paying but attention to that, you also have... The way we regulate or go about driving on roads is you know, obviously there's only straight, left, right, backwards, just on a two-dimensional plane. But maybe and we already have it now on nicer cars with the um, heads-up display. Or like it'll show you the speed limit. It just puts a little thing on your windshield. Like it'd have to be something where you have to pair it with like Sensor certain goggles or something, and it like puts you on a virtual map that's like you have to go up at certain, then you have to hold a certain altitude, and then you end up following people, but to like merging would, they, I'm sure there's a way you could figure it out. Yeah. Uh, it'd just be like virtual airspace. Yeah, a lot like, of technology involved in that. Yeah. 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 I don't discard that ever happening, uh, because that is something that also happens. I movie. just think we're, we're far away from that, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, I think so. But that happens, in, you know. It happens in the movie. In the movie, it, it's very interesting. Um, so, I would say, yeah. I mean, if you if you find time one day, just watch it, um, because I think it it puts you in perspective of, of how far we we've really come. Are. Yeah, thirty years later. You know, almost um, now, almost forty years. It was in '85. I think yes. I think the movie was released. Yeah, 1985, the first one. Yeah, yeah it's coming up on forty years next year. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And I never got around to watching it. <laughs> no, man, it's well. You know, I think that that's before you were born. It was, but everybody talked about it when I was growing up too. Like people had seen it, mm -hmm. I just I, don't, I never did. But when I was younger, we didn't have Netflix. Um, we got Netflix when I was, I think, late middle school. Or, but I mean, I remember Netflix was like you called it in or you ordered online. They sent you the send you a in the mail. Yeah, it wasn't like an online platform mm -hmm. for streaming. So that's really changed the game on everything. Being able to just find something and stream it. I think in UK, I was in UK at the time, there was, they, they called it Redbox. Uh, oh, yeah, there's Redbox here, too. Okay. I think it's still a thing. I don't know how popular it is, but you go rent it from the box, mm -hmm. take it out, and put it back in. That was kind of a blockbuster killer. That's for what led That's to it. Yeah. I think so many people didn't return to movies at Blockbuster, <laughs> that they were just like, it was a bad business model. But 
But that was how it was. I mean, rent, you rent. It, it's like when you go and rent a tool to do a job, right? You have to go and rent and then you return it. Of course, they take you, you have a membership. So they take your ID, your address and everything. And then they know where you are. So they can just like call you and say, hey, can you bring the movie back? Yeah, or they'll like suspend your account and call a credit agency mm-hmm. or something, and then you go with your sister, and then she opens up an account or something. It's like people find ways mm-hmm. to just get around it, and it's not out of like wanting to steal. Even I think it's just kind of laziness of like, oh man, I don't, I don't want to go back today. I didn't have plans to do that, you know. Or discs, they scratch, and they're not really usable anymore. So if you're not careful with it, then what? So I think streaming is so much easier, even like movies now they come out in the theater and then a month or two later they come out on apple tv or something and you pay twenty dollars for it but there's no disc you don't have to worry about it yeah you don't you don't damage it no. getting damaged it. yeah it's better the xbox that i have is just a digital edition where it's like i don't buy copies of games that could get damaged it's all just digital downloads you just yeah. have to have a big hard drive yeah the ps5 we have because chris didn't want to get the digital one so she didn't no and then we got the the one with the disc so even like the whole hogwarts it's a disc yeah it's a disc i mean even but you can download and and, and play your yeah course. you can do both yeah. so i mean i guess it's nice with the ability to put a disc in but just growing up even when i was trying to be careful inevitably the discs would scratch and games are expensive they spent 60 dollars, 70 dollars for the new gen mm-hmm. ones and then they get scratched it's ruined yeah conrad gave that to 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 the girls on, on their birthday in December. So what a nice guy! Yeah. Thanks, Corin. <laughs> I'm the one that plays the most. <laughs> You've uh, kind of dived deep into the world, right? Yeah, uh, I'm now playing on hard level, um, and uh, to see if I can. But I have to do all the side quests first to get strong because. Doing the main quest without being developed, you just, you know, you just don't. Well, you don't have you know fighting power to. After talking with you about it, it made me think: like, did I ever finish the game? And I went and looked back with Sam. We never even finished the final quests. We got close, and then uh, it's quite difficult to beat. Yeah, we didn't do it in easy. Because uh, we just this weekend uh, we finished on Lily's, my seven-year-old. Uh, it's not easy. Yeah, it's on easy, and uh, she um, she didn't want to play. So, Dad, you play. So I had to do all the fights, um, and then she was doing all the walks, you know, to get to the you know to the next fighting point, and then I had to go and step in and do the fight for her. Yeah. But. Now that all the quests are done, she's like 53% into the game only, and then she keeps on playing, you know, all of the side quests to, because, you know, she wanted to get really strong and then just go in the middle of a fight and then like, chit, 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 kill everybody. Just kill everybody. Yeah, yeah. at once like that. <laughs> yeah. Now she's doing that and she's quite strong now, uh, which is kind of fun to watch because then now she doesn't need my help anymore. Uh, the main quest is quite difficult on, on, even, or, or even on easy yeah. uh, you get a lot of time to think okay so it's um, a yellow ball that the main boss, like, boss, boss is gonna throw it to and then you, you have time to go look okay so I have all the blues ones in here so I have to switch to the yellow ones and then you know do the spells but on a hard level even though when somebody's attacking you you have little time to move and if you do the dash move, you still get hit. You gotta do just the normal rolling. Wow, really? Yeah, if you do the dash, even though you do the dash far away, they still hit you. Like it's heat seeking mm-hmm. or something? Like yeah, a- so you cannot do the dash. You have to do just a little rolling and then keep on going. Kind of at the last second? Yeah. Well, you, you, have, even, you probably you have, have less than a second to, to move away. So you just have to time it? You know when it pops up, like to say, like uh, it, it doesn't even pop up the triangle circle anymore. It's just the color. It's just the color. So it pops up red, and then you gotta just give it a little click to roll. So I don't even use the triangle anymore because it's too quick. You know, I'm playing on hard, and it's, it's like it's too quick. So I don't have time to move my my finger. I just keep my finger on the on the triangle. 
I've been struggling to find... I like playing games with Sam, but we always get into games like that. Like Hogwarts, um, on her Switch, we play uh, the Zelda games, Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom. And um, the problem with it is, like, it's only one person playing, someone else is watching, and you wait and trade. I'm trying to find, like, good co-op campaign games to play, and I just haven't been able to find anything. On um, PS3, there was a game called Resistance. And then you could do two. That's the same time. It was really nice because you play and then you you play like special ops and the other ones the army guy. And then you can just like feed on, uh, feed the army guy with supply so the shield never runs out. Um, and uh, and then you could play online against all the players. And then Chris and I, we didn't have any kids at the time in, back in UK, and uh, we played that a lot and she loved that game. Because she would play with the army and then she would be in front and everybody just, you know, kind of like uh, using the protection of the shield that she, she would put in. And she was so well developed every single game, playing online against the whole world. Real people, yeah. She would come up in first. Wow. Because I would like, you know, always be feeding her, right? Uh, her and then she would uh, be the one with the most ammo, you know, to hit any yeah, everybody. boss, everybody. So... And then she's like, I want it again, I want it again. <laughs> so it was it was a really good game. They don't make stuff like that anymore. It doesn't, it doesn't seem like, unless I'm just not familiar enough with it. But now, they, found anything. they shifted more to, instead of having two, you know, people playing in the well, same like room. Local, yeah. Yeah, they, uh, so that, that's, that's what it was back then. Right. You'd go to a lung house. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 play everybody in the same room. Yep. So, and then you you know have that ex experience in your home, right? On the created games for that. So, but now it's like you know everybody has a game and then they play in their houses. Online. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a, so. We now we play like Fortnite a lot, and then um, I play some games with my friends, but she's. I don't think they even have it on Switch. That's the thing, we're playing on different platforms too. So I play on my Xbox and she plays on Switch. I have another Xbox in the living room so she could play on that, but I think she just likes her Switch a little bit better. But um, but then you're using the same internet. So it slows it down a little and bit. And it slows it down. Yeah. And then uh, you are in, uh, in a, a disadvantage, disadvantage of the, like when it's a shooting game, right? Yeah. The person moves, and then you lose like a little bit of the yeah, you know, internet lag. Yeah, yeah. That's why I had to upgrade my monitor and the new Xbox. It gets up to 120 frames, which PCs you can get like 240 frames to get better monitors. And so it's like when you go up against like that cross-platform play, it's it's not an evil even playing field by any means. No, if, if you go I come around the corner, and by the time I've seen someone, they watched me come around the corner and they shot me. Yeah. I'm just now like getting it to register on my screen but um, somebody's in korea with you know south korea with the internet you know that they have you have no chance you know so it's still fun but <clears throat> you, yeah. you have to play against some people that are not well versed into the i'm trying to go back to like local game stuff you know that's why the switch is fun and they still like mario kart super smash bros but um the fun more like in-depth games that really draw you in with an open world don't really have like two players like two characters you can play at the same time with two controllers because you're exploring so much but it'd be cool if you could it would be nice if for example hogwarts had uh, two or three or four maybe four like you know people playing at the same time and you go and meet them and then do a quest do you know what i mean together I would, that and i'd love if they did like quidditch like if they added that to the game like online like we i could play with you playing mm -hmm. quidditch because mm -hmm. they'll do cross platform so me on xbox you and playstation we can still play together yeah that like would doing, be cool doing the races you know having to beat whatever time yeah then then we go and then you know she's talking not only me but she's talking to at least one or two or three other people like let's say four friends playing together up to yeah four all right? joining in the same game. join the same race and then you're doing racing and then you see oh dylan's over there so i made a mistake and i went wide you know in, yeah. in a corner and then and you didn't send us like, oh man he's good on, on the broom it's easy to do though <laughs> it's easy to get a little wide on those because the controls oh, are man, so so difficult, difficult. but that Fly would be cool yeah. 
Because they do that with, like, that's essentially what Grand Theft Auto servers are. You can get up to, like, 16 people on the same server, all in the same world, and you can have somebody 20 miles up north and someone down a bit. That'd be cool if they could integrate that in the hardware so we could go do stuff at the same time. at the same time, yeah. It's, it's the same thing. Because we would just load into the same world and the yeah. same server. Yeah. That'd be cool. That'd be really interesting, yeah. like an online multiplayer version of that. That that would be cool, because you know it makes and well, even like that more difficult bosses. Yes, because we both be powered up. Yeah, because the bosses will be really really powerful. Yeah, pretty much what it is uh, in in the world of um, Harry Potter. It's Harry Potter and Hermione Granger. Yeah. It, well, it, having said that, it could be three players, right? Because then, you know, somebody could go and mimic, uh, you know, Hermione Granger, somebody mimics Harry Potter, and somebody mimics... Um, Ron Weasley. Ron Weasley. Um, that would be actually very cool. You know what I mean? So I'm going to build a character that's exactly like, you know... That would be cool. Yeah. There's a lot that they could do with that game. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if they're thinking about it at all, or looking into it, because they... The game of Quidditch was never even in Hogwarts, really. Like, you don't get to play it. I think that'd be fun. <clears throat> I think it's very difficult to get the broom control. That's why it would frustrate frustrate people. Um, but at least that, you know, that little game that you, you bring the, you know, the, the, the balls. You gotta make it stop. Yeah, you gotta right make spot. it stop the right spot. And that actually would be be interesting like little mini games and stuff yeah. too yeah yeah mini games like you know catching the creatures that I need to catch and bring to the uh, room of requirements um, that would be interesting even like you know Just having the possibility of like creating some parties you know what I mean uh, let's uh, there's gonna be a party a uh, dinner you know gala or yeah. gala something I'll bring the butterbeer. Yeah, and then, you know, yeah, going to the pub and then drinking some butterbeer. <laughs> Go to Hogsmeade. <laughs> three broom, brooms, three broomsticks. Is it, is it, that's what it's called, right? The three broomsticks mm -hmm. pub, yeah. Yeah. That world is very nice, man. Dude. It is, it's very immersive. It's really interesting. I well, so. I think that's it from uh, from us today, right? I think that is. Well, after all this craziness with the <laughs> ghosts and uh, alien down. stuff. <laughs> Oof. Uh. Well, we kindly ask that you like, subscribe, comment, share with a friend, and uh, maybe leave in a comment maybe a ghost story that you've experienced. I don't know. This was a little creepy today. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see, see you, you next time. Next time. Cheers.